if you've got a fantasy football draft coming up on Yahoo or ESPN, I did ESPN's version of this yesterday, then this is the video for you because we are examining eight running backs that you need to snipe your idiot league mates on. And the reason we are specifying Yahoo is because I looked at the ADP or the average draft position of all of the running backs on paid platforms, high stakes leagues. So you're talking about the FFPC, underdog fantasy, best ball tens, leagues where you have to pay just to draft even at this point in the summer. Okay. So these ADPs, these average draft positions are very, very on top of news, alerts, training camp, preseason hype, and all that kind of stuff as it relates to Yahoo. All right. So we're looking at the biggest gap in where a running back is ranked in high stakes leagues versus where they are ranked in Yahoo ADP. Again, we did this for the ESPN platform yesterday, which we will link down below. Y'all know what to do in this economy. We come talked. <laughs> The first two players up on this list, which are huge gaps, are also overlap from yesterday's video. So I will go through them quickly if you want to hear more in-depth breakdowns of Ray Davis of the Buffalo Bills and Breland Allen of the New York Jets. Go do so in yesterday's video. Ray Davis is basically this fourth-round rookie who has looked to secure the RB2 role in Buffalo. I still think that's kind of problematic because if even if he is a bigger back who could do everything at an above average level, he's still probably not getting a ton of goal line carries. So when I look at this entire list, there's eight running backs on it. He is the only guy that I actually wouldn't really put my stamp on saying I'm going to snipe my idiot league mates on. Okay. The rest of them though, I do really like and think you should be drafting way above the Yahoo ADP. So we'll just move right into Braylon Allen. He is a behemoth of a back, a dude who at 17 years old absolutely dominated at Wisconsin and has now been dominating at Jets camp. He is supposedly the clear RB2. We saw it in preseason week one. He looked phenomenal. This is going to be a Jets offense that runs the ball a lot. And I think Brees Hall can handle as much as Brees Hall can handle, but everything behind him will be Braylon Allen. If Brees Hall goes down, Braylon Allen will be a league winner this year. The third guy up on this list is Justice Hill, the Baltimore Ravens running back behind Derrick Henry. He is going six spots higher on high stakes leagues than he is on Yahoo. Now, Justice Hill, I think he's a very mid player, but his role is going to be much, much more than just mid because Derrick Henry, we know, is a runner of the ball. He is not a pass catcher. He's not a guy that you have in on two and four minute drills. He's not a guy that you keep on the field in third and long situations. Now, normally I would say that would be Keaton Mitchell for the Baltimore Ravens. However, Keaton Mitchell tore his ACL very late in the year last year. He is, uh, from the reports that I've seen and heard, I don't think he's going to be ready for the at least the first half of this year. I don't think we'll see him back on the field until week 8, 9, or 10. And even then, there's usually a four- to six-week ramp up for guys coming off of major knee surgery. So he's kind of out of the picture. The only other back we have here, Besides Justice Hill is a six-round rookie, Rasheen Ali, who I think has been hurt for most of camp, so he's barely been participating, and that is not – you can't have that if you're a rookie. You need to stand out in camp. They got rid of J.K. Dobbins. They got rid of Gus Edwards. So realistically, right now in this backfield, it's Derrick Henry and Justice Hill, and obviously Derrick Henry is going to demand an incredible amount of attention, an incredible amount of touches – but Justice Hill is someone that this team clearly trusts. Otherwise, they wouldn't have given his ass like a lifetime contract, what it feels like at this point. But I think he's going to be a decent PPR play. So if you're in a PPR league, I think you could do worse than uh, Justice Hill, who I think in games where they're up big, right, or they're they're going to their backups where like they don't need to play Derrick Henry in the fourth quarter because Derrick Henry's a signing. He's a 30-year-old guy. Like They're going to give him that LeBron treatment. They're going to give him what the Chiefs are going to give with Kelsey this year where when they don't need to play their starters, when they're up big in the fourth quarter, they're going to rest those guys. There's no reason to give Derrick Henry all that work if you're up by 18 points in the fourth quarter. That is probably going to be Justice Hill o'clock okay so justice hill that's being drafted a lot higher in high stakes league than he is on yahoo as is jerome ford and i love this call the 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 sharp the sharp people be sharpening here they're sharpening their knives with this one jerome ford is going uh significantly higher on high stakes leagues because he's going to be the starter in cleveland on espn and yahoo and those types of leagues everyone still thinks nick chubb is going to be fine nick chubb knee is not a problem nick chubb is not old nick chubb nick chubb is passionate about football therefore science doesn't apply to him math doesn't matter injury timetables aren't real because nick chubb loves football y'all are fucking idiots i swear if you do anything after this episode besides subscribe to the channel 
please go listen to the latest Establish the Run podcast about injuries where Stefania Bell, the ESPN injury analyst, comes on and talks about Nick Chubb's return timetable and talks about how she went to Cleveland camp and Jerome Ford is the clear starter there and expected to get a shitload of touches this year. Okay, we all love Nick Chubb. He is a a savior of the city out there in Cleveland. But let's be realistic. A major reconstruction knee surgery, the same knee that he fucked up in Georgia. It's now the second time he's had to have multiple surgeries where he's torn multiple ligaments in that knee. It's problematic, okay? They can't give him a ton of volume this year on that knee, even if he does come back in a short time. I promise you Jerome Ford is the play in that backfield. That episode will also be linked down below. And it's the reason Nick Chubb is on our all-fade list in our draft guide, all right? We put together a, a list of I want to say 20, 25 guys that you need to be staying away from in fantasy football this year. We have that. We have our must draft list. We've got all of our rankings for you that you can actually you know, check off and mark as drafted in the middle of your drafts. It is an interactive draft guide. It is updated daily and it is available for purchase on BDGE.co at full price, but you can get it for a heavily discounted price if you download the Underdog Fantasy app and you use our code BDGE when you deposit $10. So full price, 35 bucks, still worth it. But you can get it at $10 just by being a first-time depositor on Underdog Fantasy using our code BDGE. And not only will you get the draft guide access emailed to you for free, but they're going to give you a deposit bonus up to $250, depending on how much you put on there. And you're going to get a free square for week one, all right? So we'll be giving preseason slips. We'll be giving in-season slips. But for week one, they're going to give you Lamar Jackson 0.5 0.5 passing yards. So you get an auto win on the account right off the rip. Make your money back right there. All right. So go cop the draft guide, bdge.co, and then go cop Devon A. Chang because he's going a lot higher in paid leagues than he is on Yahoo. He is the third player and the last player that was also carried over from yesterday's list. But realistically, Devon A. Chang just has insane upside. And good fantasy football players know that in order to win your league, right, you're, you're competing against 11 other players. You can't just have a good team. You need to have a great team. So you need to shoot for upside. And that is what Devon A. Chang is. He is this track star sprinter who is much better in between the tackles as a runner than given credit for because people just look at his size and they just assume he's a scat back. That's not the case. If you go back to his days at Texas A&M, this man is, this man is built to run the ball, okay? So I do worry a little bit about the offensive line. I worry a little bit about Raheem Mostert uh, taking goal line touches, but Devon Chan is one of those backs that, you know, you give him 12 to 15 touches and he is going to give you fantasy stardom. So we love Mr. Devon Chan. The next two backs on this list are handcuff or RB2 type backs and that is Jordan Mason of the 49ers and then I I think like obviously the reason that Jordan Mason is going higher on paid leagues is because people that are drafting in high stakes leagues are staying really on top of reports and every report out of 49ers camp is just how good Jordan Mason has looked and he is running as the RB2 both Elijah Mitchell and Isaac Garendo who could have competed for the backup role have missed basically all summer with injuries all right and that's not good Elijah Mitchell has basically missed the last three years with injuries so Niners can't really depend on him and the exciting part about Jordan Mason is that if you get him really really late like one you could take Christian McCaffrey early on if he gets hurt then you have a backup in Jordan Mason I think it'll be some sort of committee I don't think Jordan Mason is going to get a C-Mac type workload but he should be the first guy in he should be the goal line back he should get a lot of production uh, in that role. The other thing is Christian McCaffrey is already dealing with a calf strain. Now he might be a hundred percent by week one. He might not really be hampered by this at all this year. But the thing is like the calf strains, the muscle strains, they linger, right? They linger for weeks. This is always a week to week injury. And what it does is like, even if you don't re-injure it right away, it gives you a higher percentage chance of re-injuring it for the first six weeks of the season. That is like the problem with it, right? Like we can't predict injuries, But we can predict that this person, based off of like actual scientific data and research, they have a higher risk of re-injuring that calf muscle through the first six weeks of the season. So it is a little bit more of rolling the dice on a guy like Christian McCaffrey. If you are drafting him with your first round pick, Jordan Mason is the backup and the handcuff to own. The next guy up on this list is Eric Gray, the New York Giants running back, coming off of a monster week one preseason game. Now, this is one that I actually disagree with because... Devin Singletary, not a guy I'm drafting. He is a guy that I'm absolutely fading this year. I don't think he's talented enough to hold a workhorse role and a really bad offense behind a really bad offensive line for the entirety of the year. I loved Tyrone Tracy, the rookie running back out of Purdue, who spent four years in college playing wide receiver before switching to running back at Purdue and breaking out. He was having a really good offseason. He won the running back two job. And then in practice earlier this week, he got taken off the field 
and they put an air cast on his leg, and it looked like a season-ending injury. When you have those types of exits on the practice field, it was a non-contact injury. Uh, it looks like it's devastating, and I think this is the reason that Eric Gray jumped up is because most people assumed he was out for the season. However, the injury came back with a much less severe diagnosis than we had first anticipated. Apparently, he is just week to week. The dude could actually play in week one off the rip. Now, this could be an injury. We don't really have any more information than that other than it was not as serious as we thought it would be. Uh, so with Tyrone Tracy, this like if it ends up being a high ankle sprain, then we've got problems because that's something that takes a really long time to heal and then lingers throughout the entire season. But until we have more information, I'm not confident that Eric Gray is the direct backup here. So I would disagree with this one, but I would heavily agree with Javonta Williams. The vibes around Javonta Williams early this summer were bad. They were they were really, really, really bad. However, everything that I've read and looked into and heard from Denver camp and beat reporters that I trust out there is that Javante has looked fantastic. OK, Javante has looked like he looked two years ago. Last year, he was always going to be a terrible pick. He was like the top of our list on our all fade list in our draft guide. There's nothing worse than people and their injury optimism with players, i.e., Cooper Cup. This tweet got a lot of pushback. This tweet has a lot of tweets deleted by author replies in in the comments at, at this point. But Javonta Williams was always a bad pick last year. Javonta Williams is now two years removed from the ACL and is the clear lead back in Denver. He looked really strong and explosive in their first week one preseason game. And I think he's going to get 60 percent of the touches in this backfield. A lot of it's going to depend on the success of, of Denver. Can Bo Nix lead them on drives? Can they score points, et cetera? I am more more worried about that than I am as Javante Williams as a player and Javante Williams' role in this backfield. I think Javante, uh, the hate and the vibes have gone way too far in the wrong direction. So he's a dude that when you get to like the ninth round, eighth, ninth, tenth round, is pretty much an easy smash every single time he is on the board and available to pick for me on Yahoo, on ESPN, on Underdog, high stakes, low stakes, no stakes, your mother's stakes. It don't fucking matter, all right? Javante's the last guy up on this list. So we've got eight. Ray Davis, Braylon Allen, Justice Hill, Jerome Ford, Devon A. Chan, Jordan Mason, Eric Gray, Javante Williams. Dudes going much higher, running backs going much higher on high stakes leagues than they are on Yahoo. As I said, the two guys I don't really, really agree with or I'm not you know, overly exuberant about uh, are Ray Davis and Eric Gray. But the rest of them, I think they are very good picks. I think you should be sniping your idiot league mates on those six running backs. All right. That's all I got for y'all today. Again, if you want everything in the draft guide, just go to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog Fantasy app linked in the show notes. Use code BDGE when you deposit for the first time, $10 or more, and you will get the draft guide emailed to y'all absolutely free. I love you. I'm out. Subscribe. Smoochies.